Hey everyone, welcome to episode 12 of the Michael Boothby Show. Excited to be here. And here with Alejandro Salinas, um, who's been called a master dream yogi by some people. Uh, he, he refuses to use the title himself. <laughs> flattered though. Flattered, he's flattered. Um, yeah. It's March 31st, last day of March, beginning of spring. Um, you know, guys, we're just going to wait a little bit. Uh, See who joins. Hey, Taylor. Hey, Oliver. Um, we're also live yeah. on Instagram, Alejandro's Instagram, Same my Instagram. We're, in, we're streaming from three places. Got to catch them all. Got to catch them all. <laughs> you know, whatever you stream. You know, thank you for tuning in. But yeah, if, you're, you so if you are tuning in on Facebook, press like, here, uh, press fun. love, ha ha, <laughs> angry, any of those reaction buttons. It's going to help us get, uh, get up in the feed. Um, yeah, we're just going to, we're going to get started. Um, Sure. Alejandro, man, how, how have you been? How's your day? My day was super chill. Uh, <laughs> easy Sunday. Easy Sunday. It's Sunday. Just kind of cleaning, yeah. taking care of like social media stuff, posting stuff up, writing copy, <laughs> cleaning a little bit. Doing the work. <laughs> yeah, the, the productive home. Awesome. Time. That's good, you know? I think uh, I at least, I don't know, but I know for myself, like when my home's in disarray, I'm in disarray. It's a reflection you know? of your, your mind. Yeah, yeah. And and the mind, you know, is that that's that's where the dreams happen, right? Uh, that's exactly where the dreams happen. So if you have a dirty home, you can have a dirty <laughs> mind, you can have dirty <laughs> dreams. <laughs> uh, some people might be into that. Hey, more you know. power to them. Cool, hey, we've got three people watching, one person watching. Thank you, guys. Press yeah. like, press love, press ha-ha. If you're joining us on Instagram, thank you so yeah. much. Um, questions? If, yeah, if you guys, throughout the broadcast, questions. if you have any questions about anything at all for uh, myself or Alejandro, just write them in the comments. We might not be able to get to them right away, but we are going to be monitoring them, and when we find yeah. a stopping point, like we'll, we'll address them. So if anything piques your curiosity, just shoot, just fire, don't wait. You know, life is right now, so... Type any comments you may have right there, and we'll get to them. Um, cool. Alejandro, where to, where to begin? Uh, you know, how, how old are you? I'm a... Uh, you look timeless. Thanks. <laughs> That's what I go for. 1,500 years. <laughs> not, you know, not far off. I, I definitely indulge a lot of the, the vampire myth. But, I could uh, see that. <laughs> but, but 20, 26. Oh my gosh! Twenty seven in June. Wow! Yeah, I turned twenty eight in May. Yeah. Wow, that's amazing. Cool, and oh and you've been on this path, this this dream yoga and, and yogic path since for a while. For a while, like I mean, yoga about ten years. Okay, and then um, dreams phew, <laughs> since I was young. You know, just like yeah, um, would always read before bed a lot. Okay. Um, and that always inspired a lot of crazy, cool dreams. Yeah. Um, <laughs> very narrative. Like, I would have, like, two, like, a series of, of dreams in the mm. same, like, sort of setting. And then I think somewhere in, like, middle school, a mm. friend of mine gave me a book on wizardry. Wizardry. Give me this book on, like, <laughs> so wizardry. Cool. It, yeah. was, like, it was a fun little, like, kid's book. Yeah. But there was, like, the littlest chapter about dreaming and the way wizards mm. dream and they're like wizards like can be aware of their dreams um and can like ask for for a favor uh, or a lesson from the dream mm. um and that really sparked an, uh, a time and even before then i, I probably saw the matrix <laughs> yeah right and you're like we're living older in brothers dream. older brothers i think i think i was in like third grade when the matrix came out mm. and that left such an impression that as i when i and i grew up yeah. looking back i was like okay my whole life path makes sense <laughs> <laughs> i completely blame the matrix i am neo <laughs> yeah this is all happening uh, that's awesome oh yeah. oh oh, oh. Yeah. We, got, we got a wild roommate Special. Oh, hey, Mitch. Live. This, is, this is my roommate, hey, Mitch. <laughs> oh, we already got our first questions. Uh, Enzo asked, is, is that your brother? No. Well, my brother from well, another mother. We, we were glasses sure. bros. We are yeah. glasses brothers. Good style. For man. sure. It's a good style. Choosing wisely. Um, oh, Oliver asks, uh, my friend from New Zealand, speaking of dreams, we use our phones all the time. Have you ever dreamed 
you were using your cell phone. Yeah. Um, oh. Not often. Yeah. But one, I was almost lucid. Oh. Uh, and I checked my phone in the dream, and I, I double-checked it for, for the time. Mm. And the time didn't change. Ah. And you should recheck things about four times just to, like, be safe. Yeah. And I, it wasn't changing. And I, I talked to my friend in the dream. I was like, Is, this seems like a dream. Are we dreaming? Yeah. And she's like, no, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> And we just like carried mm. on and I totally missed that opportunity. Wow. Um, but not normally, but very, very. It's not every now and then. You? Um, I don't think so. Yeah. I, and it's also, I, I've, I have not had, I can probably count on my hand how many lucid dreams I've had. But, and like when I have had them, it's like I get very excited. But I also feel yeah. like it's like once I've become lucid, it's like it's like the dream police come and they're like he knows <laughs> he stopping. knows and this because like, Smith coming around yeah, yeah. you know because it's only Shut like I, I always feel like it's like I get to explore but then it's like I never last long and then I'm like waking up and I'm like oh darn it you know because yeah. it's like I was just starting to explore the dream police do you have do you have experience with with the dream police the dream or? police you know um, <laughs> a few teachers have kind of steered me away from the idea of trying to control the dream. Okay. And I think that's where a lot of this, this kind of internal tension can happen. Okay, yeah. And moving towards this idea of befriending mm. the dream. Going as with the treating flow. your subconscious as a co-conspirator. Okay. Versus trying to like overpower. Yeah. The, the dream state, because there is like, as much as, um, there's a great metaphor, they say, no dreamer controls a dream any more than a sailor controls the mm. sea. Yeah. You have your boat, your sail, and you can kind of work with the wind okay. and the waters, but some things are completely out of your control. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. Oh, we have another question from Sasha. Has your study of dreaming changed how you feel in the waking life, and do you think the waking life is a dream? Uh, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, you know, one of the fundamental teachings of dream yoga mm. in the Tibetan tradition is that life is as dreamy as our dreams are mm. and that our waking experience, uh, our dreams are as real as our waking experience. Mm. And so there's this kind of like no difference between the two. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it, and in this moment of recognition in either, when we're awake, awake, yeah. right? Buddha means the awakened one. Mm, to become awake. In from, the dream. from the dream, yeah. all things are not illusory and not real, but illusory in the sense that things are constantly morphing and changing. Yeah. And even as solid as something seems, it is only temporary and fleeting. Yeah, I, I like that. And I, I remember when when I had Dusty on the show, we talked a lot about how like going on a road trip, and I feel this too, like being mm. like I spent the last four weeks like in Colorado and Sedona, and yeah. now I'm back here, and it's just like my reality is so different here from there, and like like the road trip, like it, it it's such a trip, you know, and like yeah. like really like like a psychedelic trip, but because it's real life, it's like it's. It's all real, but it does. Mm -hmm. It feels like such a dream. Like I go and think about like the last few weeks. I'm like, wow, like I did a lot. And like, but also like, how did that happen? <laughs> like, you know, it yeah. does it does definitely have that that dream quality to it. You know? Did you notice uh, any difference in your dreams while you were traveling? Yeah. It was like just just a lot more erratic, you know? Yeah. It's like I almost feel like when I'm in one place, it's like my dreams, it's like they kind of have like a theme, or it's all kind of like I don't know. It does. It does it's the same feeling, mm. but depending on where I was, it was like it was just all over the place. Um, and I hear Sedona is like magical. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Oh my if you haven't been to Sedona, yeah. check it out. Magical red rocks. Just like it's Someday. just. Yeah, it's a beautiful place. But I, I had a dream last night here. Um, well, first, it's funny, I, I left a water bottle at a grocery store. So in my dream, I was looking for my water bottle. But then I was also on the beach with Tool. And that was, I was just like talking to them, okay. hanging out with Tool, I'm one down. of my favorite bands. And They're coming. 
Yeah, I'm seeing them Man. with System of a Down. I saw System of the Metro once. Oh my god. Yeah, we in line for like four hours, so worth it. Oh my gosh. You have to see a tool though. Yeah, I've seen I see I've seen tool, but I haven't seen a system. So yeah. our consciousness yeah. combined. I know. Them all. <laughs> them all. Yeah. So that's cool. So maybe let's go back to the, you know, going discovering this dream yoga and like that your whole kind of that kind of journey the there. origin story yeah yeah so i sometimes feel uh fraudulent or guilty I'm not, like <laughs> i'm not a yeah. very natural dreamer mm, what do you mean by that like some people like have always been dreaming since they were little okay yeah and for me uh i had difficulty doing it Mm. And so I just would just invest more and more time and energy mm. uh, into studying more about dreams, learning more about dreams, and suddenly had this like huge accumulated knowledge about dreams because I was just geeking out about it. <laughs> yeah. Um, where I'm, I'm doing what I'm doing now, and and it wasn't until I, I did my yoga teacher training, and it was like 2016, 2017, we had to do a thesis like final workshop project okay yeah and I was like well what would I do mine on and one of my other yoga teachers Gabriel Halpern who's my mm. first yoga teacher told us at one point to be who you needed when you were younger mm. and I was like okay I would have appreciated like a place where I could have learned more about dreams yeah and so I held this workshop and I had um, also have a theater background. Okay, yeah. And even in theater school and, and yoga, those two intersections, I always wanted to bring it together. And the dream subject provided the perfect medium. Yeah, for <clears throat> I could see that. And so mm -hmm. I created this sort of art installation. Um, I spent hours like, um, the yoga studio had a, a, a barn. Mm. And had these giant orange banners, and I covered the whole windows with these orange light. Orange light um, promotes sleepiness okay. as opposed to blue light, huh. um, which you know that melatonin helps regulate our circadian cycles. Okay, um, cool. Yeah. yeah. So you, you, some people take melatonin at night as a, a supplement to help them sleep, yeah. and um, the blue light inhibits that, mm. so it lets us know it's daytime, and so that's why. It, being on cell phones too late is pretty terrible. Well, that's why. Yeah, and, uh, I have both my both my laptop and my phone now at like seven p.m. or something. They turn all the blue light yeah. kills it. Yeah, which is which is a cool advancement. Oh, yeah. they, they're learning. Sometimes <laughs> people hand me their phone and I'm like, ah. I did. I'm just like, oh, geez, gonna save so They're dimming uh, everything. Yeah. Well, we do. So, um, yeah. Oh, we're getting we're getting oh, more wow. questions. Which we're blowing up. Uh, Oliver says, "Do you believe in other dimensions?" Uh, I believe the universe is incredibly vast and expanse and infinite. <laughs> so it seems like hard not to. Yeah. Um, how we conceptualize those, I think, is that's a great interesting. Yeah, you know, because I don't know for sure, and yeah. I, I don't feel like I have any right to say one way or the other. There are dimensions, but I don't know how I would explain them or anything. Um, right. And dimension, you know, even that's like a big space and time. Big word. Yeah, it, it is. And it's a, I think it's a word that now, especially in the spiritual community, gets, gets thrown out a lot, like right. multidimensionality. And, and I mean, the way I've kind of seen it, because like, I do believe we're all multidimensional beings, and it's like you can get like esoteric about it and really run away, but for, like all I mean is just like we really, there, we have so many dimensions to us. We have so many kind of like personalities within us and like characters, and we can be all of them at once and it's like people are like who are you and it's like we try to put people in these boxes but it's like we really all we're all everyone if we're all one mm -hmm. then we all are multi-dimensional and it's like it's i think it's like what do we choose to inhabit and what do we choose to kind of um express it's like these are mm -hmm. you know carl Jung and his archetypes oh, sure. and even um like myths and mythology and it's like what stories are we kind of living and so yeah. we have it all um oh my gosh we're just we're just blowing up is that does anyone on instagram have um no not here but um you oh, know no. even i yeah when i studied with stephen LeBurge, who's okay. leading dream researcher um 
he wrote the first book on dreaming I ever bought. Mm. Um, exploring the world of lucid dreaming. Exploring the world of lucid dreaming. Exploring the world of lucid dreaming. Check it out. Which is a classic. <laughs> yeah. Um, <clears throat> and from a very young age, I wanted to take this trip to Hawaii mm. and go on this retreat. And I finally did it. Okay. Um, and I learned so much there for sure. Oh, yeah. Uh, and even just the people that gathered there. But he said he stopped using the term reality mm. because of this um, idea I mentioned up earlier. Um, and that there are a multitude of realities. Like your, your dream world is real. Your, your physical body responds to the dream mm. as if it were actually happening. Right. Um, on a psychological level, on an emotional level, on a physiological level. Mm. Um, and everyone has these vast alternating different realities, experiences, and perspectives. And even that's like multidimensional um, without even getting into mm. aliens and things. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, like, I've been getting super into <laughs> that, which I've been told they prefer to be called extraterrestrial. Extraterrestrial <laughs> is I don't, but, more politically you know, correct. I guess so, right? Even PC culture hasn't yeah. escaped. Uh, I would love to talk to one. Uh, or or off-world beings. Off Me too. World, yeah. I, I, I've been really getting into like David Wilcock, who does a lot of research. Of, he was on Ancient Aliens, but he's like he's got a lot of videos on YouTube now. He's got a whole program I'm in called called Ascension Mysteries School, okay. which is like a lot of just like this like ancient prophecies and stuff. But like now it's like coming to pass, so it's like a lot of ascension. There's a solar flash coming. We're all gonna yeah. get our DNA upgraded. You know, who knows though? Who knows? But um, we also got some more questions. Oh, so Enzo, who I live with him in New Zealand, he's from Italy. He said a few nights ago, I dreamed to die. Do you think um, is wishing more life for me? Um, do you think like the dream? So if he dreamed, he was, you know, he was dying. So death is yeah. something I'm also very interested in. Right. Yeah. Um, and the relationship between dreams and dying is is super yeah. close. Yeah. Okay. Even yeah. on a mythological level. Yeah. Um, uh, Morpheus, the god of dreams, and Thanatos, the god of death, mm. are twin brothers mm. and sons of Hypnos, the god of sleep. Very interesting. Of like yeah. Yeah. And and so death, a lot of people, especially in dreams, when they're interpreting dreams take those to be uh, very literal. Yeah. And often death is more symbolic of transformation or change. Mm. Um, or like, you know, think of like the ending of an era. Right. Or the end of this chapter, like mm. on to the next one. So that might, that might be it. Um, um, and so it might yeah, be. Yeah, and obviously just, uh, yeah. when interpreting dreams, like it's, it, all it's in your, your context, <laughs> your own personal context, mm. your own per personal mythology where you feel at um, spiritually and emotionally at this point in your life, whatever resonates. I, I think that's like, I think about that about life too. It's like we say like our dreams are open to interpretation. And, but you know, if our life's a dream, that so is our life. And it's like so much of the meaning is just, we create it, mm. you know? It's like, mm -hmm. it really is our dream. And it's like, you know, we, it's like much like, and we can kind of just like watch well, just like, or we, we can flow with it and like, kind of slightly influence it and steer our lives slowly yeah in the so we're living the living the dream it's like that's the phrase it's called <laughs> living, living the, dream. the dream man right. he's living the dream it's like right. well, what's the dream it's whatever you your ideal it. whatever you make of it yeah for sure um and, and on that note um this is the top of like dreams for self-development sasha asked have you used dreaming to manifest things in waking life and has it worked have I used dream? I mean, e yes. Um, in a lot of different kind of gross and subtle ways. Um, you know, sometimes dreams will just give you like a, a creative spark mm. uh, of inspiration of something yeah. or a little bit of clarity mm. on something that's been going on. Yeah. Um, and sometimes it's intentional, sometimes it's not. Um, and Charlie Morley introduced me to this idea. He's another Tibetan dream teacher from London. Um, makes these dream plans. And he was telling us these dream plans can either manifest in a lucid dream, in a regular dream, or in your waking life. 
Mm. That they don't even really need to be in the dream for them to um, manifest, if, if you will. Hmm. Yeah. Because there's, <laughs> there's no difference. There's no difference. Um, but the, yeah. in the Toltec tradition of dreaming, they say that in order to change something in your life first, you need to first change it in the dream. Hmm. And so I've noticed um, cultivating peace within myself and others. Yeah. Watching dreams change from maybe responding more aggressively to something mm. to being nicer or like responding to dream characters in a nicer way. Yeah. And so there was once I was in an elevator in this dream and someone like wouldn't let the door close. I was like, why are you being <laughs> what are you doing? Come on, asshole? man. Like, yeah, close like, the door. Yeah. And eventually he gets in and he's got this Starbucks cup and I splash him. <laughs> the the coffee right in his face <laughs> wow but then immediately afterward i was like hey you shouldn't be doing stuff like that yeah um or often a, lo a lot of my nightmares i haven't had too many nightmares i had one nightmare recently mm. but years ago a lot of like uh like zombie or like swat team type invasion type dreams mm. and instead of responding in fear or even um, in anger or anything, I would notice being like, hey, there's got to be a diplomatic solution to this yeah. in the dream. And really f seeing those mental habits change, mm. um, which is how I understand karma. Yeah, okay. These mental habits, these actions yeah. that become second nature. You have to practice this sort of positive karma yeah. Or these cultivate these positive qualities. Um, and in the Tibetan dream tradition, they say at the end of your life, your karma accumulates and our outward experience of life yeah. suddenly starts caving inward mm. and we fall back on our habits, our karma. Right. And that is what creates these hellish or heavenly experiences. Right. So if our perception yeah. is with anger, hate, when that caves in, you feel like you're, you're like, oh, oh gosh, yeah, because right. it's you, these habits and like you, how you lived your whole life, right. it just comes pouring back if in. You're practicing love and compassion. Then you can then you're, you're really going to elevate. Like, oh, you're, oh wow, I've, I've right. made good choices, which that's, I love what you just said too about just like the, it's, it's a practice. I mean, every, I think everything's a practice, but also talking about habits is like for me, it's a really personal thing, even like, cause like this morning, like I woke up this morning, I've been, you know, just recovering from being sick. I'm like frustrated. I want all this stuff done. And I woke up and like immediately just like started cleaning the room. Sasha was still sleeping, but I was like angry. I was like, no, and then she was like, what the fuck dude? And, and, and I was like, you know, it was great though. Cause then I was like, I really like, at first I was just like grumpy. Then I like, I sat and I meditate with it. I'm like, if I was her, like, I wouldn't want to be, I wouldn't want to wake up. And she was like, this is a shitty way to wake up. But I'm like, oh, you're right. But then like, I really meditated on, I, like, I cried. I was like, this isn't who I want to be. I don't want to be this angry, waking up every, you know, like yeah. it's, it's such a grump. And so, exactly. I had that awareness and I was like, I, I apologize. I was like, I'm so sorry. Like, I'm not going to do that again. And I, I put in my, I literally put in my phone every morning at 7 a.m. It's like, kiss Sasha. Tell her you love her and tell yourself you love yourself. Wow. But I'm like, you know, just like, boom, because I'm, I, I probably won't keep it in my phone forever, but until I build that habit, yeah. I want a reminder. Because yeah. it's like, that's, I think, you know, we all, especially in the age of like self-development, we want to like read a book or go to a conference, do a training and like expect that, oh, I'm now enlightened. And it's like, it's not how it works. It's, it's like, process. you find, exa exactly, it's a process. So you, you got to find what works for Lifelong you. Process. Exactly, you know, and you're going to fuck <laughs> up. Yeah. You are going to fall off the train. And it's like the difference is exactly like to have awareness in those moments and go, oh God, old, the old things are coming back up. Well, you know, I choose this new thing. And, and then the next mm -hmm. time it happens, you respond differently. And it's like, it's like all those little moments. You yeah. know? And that's like, that's the dream. It's like these that's little moments. Is. What are you choosing? And when you are conscious of the dream, right. what do you choose to do? Yeah. Versus going on. <laughs> Just keep pilot. going. Exactly. The Because I mean, it's, it's easy to keep going with the autopilot. It's, it's, it's called auto for a reason. Right. It's automatic, you know? You're and sometimes already... it's useful. Sometimes, yeah, uh, definitely. Yeah. You want to develop good habits. Yeah. 
yeah. the first time around. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, you, you, you'd hope so. Or, you know, and then when it comes up, you just get back on the path, yeah. whatever that path you've decided for yourself. And also, Sasha has another interesting question. Do you think it's possible to go to sleep with a group of people and wake up together in a dream with each other? See, that sounds like the Matrix. <laughs> that sounds like... We all just get <laughs> plugged in. Yeah, right? We're in the uh, room together, yeah. Um, there's a lot of mysterious things mm. in dreams. And there's plenty of people who've attempted and, and tried. Um, <laughs> we already saw that question, yeah. okay. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> so um we'll get to that. We'll minute. get to that, yeah. Um it's it's hard to validate those experiences on like a scientific right scale. Yeah. Because how do you know you didn't just imagine different things? Um and I've had some interesting experiences. Um and it would synchronicities maybe mm. um but it can be difficult mm. uh, to really make sure there's not um you know and i see this with people who do live together yeah um maybe families or, or couples right yeah maybe siblings if you're on a road trip with someone for a long time or living with someone for a long time you're intaking a lot of the same information yeah. And maybe going through similar emotional experiences mm. that can then kind of manifest like project, in a similar yeah. things. Um, I'm not saying it's impossible. There's some, <laughs> you could really go down the rabbit I'm hole. I'm sure, yeah. I'm you sure can go down sure. the rabbit hole. Um, there are depths. <laughs> and this, um, I'm reading this book by James Hillman, mm. who is a psychologist. Um, very contemporary, and was talking a lot about these um, the idea of, of Hades being ruled mm. uh, in this dream realm mm. of this like underworld yeah. as rep representation of our unconscious yeah. um, that there are these great depths to them that can be frightening and unknown and mysterious. Mm. Um, that we need to, to bring to light, right? You mentioned Carl Jung earlier. Yeah, yeah. He says, uh, enlightenment doesn't come from imagining figures of light, but by making the darkness conscious. Right, the shadow work. Yeah. The shadow work. But mm. also we think of dreams, we think of death mm. as these times of darkness. Yeah. Nighttime, uh, even if you're not remembering your dreams, that the sleep... Oh, it's like Dark, yeah. Self oh. is like a dark experience. Yeah. And this lapse of, of memory, there's no recollection. Like a lack of consciousness. Right. Yeah. And I'm just, all, all we're doing is bringing awareness to, to them. as many to things as possible. Yeah. 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 That's, that's an interesting. So, but, but sharing, sharing, <laughs> I mean, yeah. Um, I've been on retreats um, where people show up in each other's dreams. Mm. They're not necessarily the same dream. Yeah. Um, which makes it kind of difficult, but um, I've heard stories of mutual dreaming, mm. and they're very mind blowing. Yeah, and one of my um, dream friends, or re this is a real friend. Yeah, <laughs> uh, my friend from London, Tree Car. You can follow her on Instagram, and okay. she's got a few pages. You can just look up Tree Car, Lucid Dreaming. She does tarot. She's also a death doula musician. Mm. We became friends immediately. Um, nice. Yeah, and another friend of ours. Jennifer, Clara Scora, okay. um, taught Tree mutual dreaming. And then Tree was trying to teach me mutual dreaming. And Tree had an experience where she was trying to meet me. Mm. And she had an astral experience, out of body experience. And then at a certain point, kind of used her palm as like Google Maps mm. and was like Chicago. <laughs> Uh, I'm gonna, I, I got to meet Alejandro wow. in the dream. Yeah. And she wakes up, tells me, she's like, okay, I, I landed in Chicago. I looked it up on Google Maps. There were these like turret towers. I kind of saw some on a street called Armitage Avenue. And I was like, I live really close to Armitage Avenue, yeah. actually. Yeah. Uh, and she's all the way in London. And I don't imagine she has a pretty um, experienced working understanding of, of the Chicago <laughs> the <laughs> grid yeah. system. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that was like kind of, uh, that was, that was a really interesting. 
Yeah. Um, that's probably as close as I've gotten to sharing that, that sort of experience. People have been in my dreams. Um, but <laughs> it's hard, you know? Yeah. To, to really decipher. Dreams. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Maybe someday. There's so much we don't know about sleep in general and dreams. So much we don't know about, about life. life. About like yeah, everything, right? Everybody. We're like we're so human. We like we think we know so I much. Know. It's like we know nothing. We know, yeah. you know. But it's fun. I think I love that though. I love yeah. how little I know because it's like, you know, it's it's just having curiosity. I mean, that's why I started this show. It's like so I can just invite people on who everyone kind of has this different specialty or is into something yeah. different, and I learn a lot just from these conversations. And because to me. You know, I think, you know, we are, I think, I do believe we are all one. Um, and so, like, when I interview people, it's like I get to learn more about myself and I get to learn more about life. Yeah, um, we're all reflections. We are, yeah, yeah. And in, in the dream, it's very literal. Yeah, right. You really, like, the things that you see in a dream. They're are all very, you. Yeah. Which is why we're, yeah. when you're dealing with, like, nightmares and stuff. Yeah. Um, the teaching is to treat everything in the dream as if it were a part of you, mm. which is not unlike the life, the right? Like what a dream, of, of like, course. I am you. You are me. We're treat all the like, golden this rule together. of like treat right. everyone like you'd like to be treated. You know, because right. if if you were everyone, wouldn't you? Wouldn't you be pretty? You'd be kind to everyone. But yeah, yeah. Cool guys, if you're just, if you're just joining, um, Alejandro's an expert on on dreams, dream yoga. Um, he's, you're also a, a death doula. We, we, we haven't uh, even really got into the death into that. Well, maybe we'll get into that. But guys, if you're just joining, seriously, press like, press love, press any of those buttons. If, if we're making sense, type also, if we're not making sense, like just type some comments or questions. Um, we'll, we'll get to them when we find a pause in our conversation. Yeah. Um, we have our Instagram <laughs> feeds running, so we're uh, we're getting questions from all directions. Hey, Lexi, how's it going? Um, if you have any questions, feel free to type them, press like, press love, all those things. Um, we have a juicy question <laughs> from, from my pal Oliver in New Zealand, and he, he asks, do you think AI might be our salvation? <laughs> uh, That's a tough one. I personally don't think so. I, don't I, um, know. I think we're, we will have I to think, be our own salvation. Right. I think it's like if the AI is a salvation, it's only because we've programmed it in such a way that right. it serves humanity. I don't think technolo technology on its own is just technology. You yeah. know, it's really up to who's using it. Um, I currently don't really trust the people in charge of big tech. I don't. I think they're it's, uh, fishy. It's a little fishy. It's There's fishy. a lot of secrets. There's a lot of surveillance. A lot of and even like yeah. just like you know. I remember when Facebook existed. I'm, I'm on Facebook right now. God, they're gonna delete this video because I'm <laughs> criticizing them. Censored. Um, censored. I've I've been censored before. Yeah. I in a video. I don't even want to say the word. I was at a hotel and I I I, I, I said someone was someone might have been. Uh, Erdered, erdered, <laughs> erdered here. Um, yeah. I don't want to use the word because it's like well, I, was, I made this video, a live video, and then I, when I watched it back, as soon as I said the word, all the audio was cut out. Wow. And I'm like, was this? It was very fishy. I was like this, and again, I was talking about nothing. And I'm, I'm not really a, I'm not a big personality either. So it was like kind of yeah. scary. I'm like, who's watching? <laughs> cool, Katie. Hey, how's it going, Katie? Hello. If you have any questions, uh. For myself, for Alejandro, feel free to type them in. We've been talking a lot about dreams. I think we should now shift because we're about we're about halfway through. Like wow, already? Yeah, right. The, the time flies. flies. Um, but let's. I think we should let's talk about death because I know let's you actually death. you you work a lot with it. And you also host um, events yeah, around hosted, Chicago. Uh, these death cafes. Yeah. So let's talk. A, maybe a, talk a about this first. Yeah. I do. I do out of um, this nonprofit called Inner Sense Healing Arts Collective. Okay, man. It's yeah, I mean it is. And, uh, <laughs> it's a space for all types of healing arts, um, not limited to just yoga. There's plenty of yoga, but there's also tarot. There's like a, my my buddy Sequoia teaches a hip hop meditation That's class. Awesome. Before yeah. my dream yoga class on Wednesday nights, uh, there's a tarot class. There's like astrology meetups, Reiki mm. meetups. Um, there's you know, dance with uh, uh, Julie Brennan, <clears throat> oh, yeah. sound yeah. healing, so much goes on there. That's amazing. Yeah. It's incredible. Um, again, it's a nonprofit, super diverse, inclusive. Uh, you can afford it. They have tiered pricing for mm. drop ins and memberships. Um, and so 
Yeah, the, the Death Cafe is a movement started in 2010 by this guy, John Underwood, in London. Mm. And the idea was Underwood. to just... Underwood. Yeah, right. <laughs> he, that would be the name of the person <laughs> <sitting> named <laughs> Death Cafes. <laughs> um, yeah. So to just talk about death and, and to break the taboo around talking around death and dying. I love that. that yeah. A lot of people avoid it altogether. And in hospice, they say it's always... Uh, too soon until it's too late to talk mm. about death. Yeah. Um, and, you know, one of my personal missions I took on was to relax the planet mm. um, in, in as many ways as I can. And I, I found, and there's a ton of research, too, that uh, <laughs> talking about death, <laughs> talking about death and dying um, really alleviates a lot of the pressure from life that we're having. Yeah. Puts things into perspective. And at this death cafe, I was amazed. I was all fuzzy inside on how much laughter and joy I was mm. seeing in the room. We were just talking about that. Oh, and the energy was yeah. so high from, from <laughs> when we started versus afterward. People were like, I'm looking forward to the funeral. I can't like, wait to die. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no, no, no. Not yet, not yet, not yet. Not yet. Don't. <laughs> uh, on its own time. Yeah, but that's great, though. That's um, like that. I yeah. I think that's such a great. It's great that we're there's there are <laughs> events that are like exactly having people have this conversation because you're right. I think people don't have that conversation until sure. it's too late. Or I I remember driving to breathe last summer, and I was like getting really freaked out because I saw all these like ads for these like um, not retirement but like old old people yeah. homes. I don't have a good word for it, but it's like. And it's like, I, I, that whole system is like, it's like we don't care about our, our old and our dying. Yeah. And it's like... The elderly and, are definitely displaced. Yeah, and there's a lot of abuse that happens. And it's like, shouldn't... These people should have a, a yeah. nice place to live and to, to, to die and like really be taken care of and revered. For sure. And it's like such a... And then it's like, you know, even just seeing it's like affordable. Like find an affordable place for your grandma to die, and it's like that, that's so awful that we yeah. we commoditize this whole thing and this process, and and none of it sounds good. None of it sounds. It's not like it's like here's the place to die, <laughs> place. And, it's, and it's beautiful, and you you know, and your grandma will die in a beautiful field, and someone yeah. will be there to listen to them. Like that's like what I would want, you know, like a yeah. a super mindful, yeah, um, old person home where it's like we're just meditating and like let's like imagine every day there's a death cafe and like you know or just just connecting with people and in, in, yeah. in a conscious way so i don't know in your like in your um in the depths of your mind it's like what would that look like an ideal dying home i don't know what to call it because it doesn't i don't think it exists um so there's like hospice work. Right, well, hospice, yeah. And sure. hospice is a little different than like a nursing home. Some mm, people in hospice right. stay in their own homes. Mm. But what hospice provides is like a whole team of caregivers. And I've worked as a, a massage therapist. Mm. Um, we call it comfort touch. Yeah. Um, for, for some of those people, a medical staff, just people to volunteer, to talk, to just be present. Um, because... And it has to do a lot with our own societal, yeah. you know, rejection. There's this, this inner cultural shadow, yeah. shadow work yeah. around this fear of death. Even though it's inevitable, we want to avoid it. Um, where really we should be embracing it. Yeah, accepting it. And that'll change um, a lot. And every little death cafe, you can host them on your own. Yeah. Um, it's not difficult. If anyone's <laughs> interested, Death Cafe has a website. Mm. They kind of give you some basic guidelines on how to do it. Um, but even talking with family, mm. um, I'm like, hey, what, what do you want to happen when you die? Yeah. Having that conversation so that when they do die, you are not left grieving and also, and also having to deal like, what do you, with what do you all want this to do? logistical stuff. Uh. And if you get that stuff out of the way, you can take more time to, to really grieve and, and digest and process yeah. those experiences that have happened. Yeah. And it's just so funny because yesterday I, I met up with a friend from college who like I hadn't seen in like five years and, and, and I think she's in uh, NP school now. She's becoming a nurse practitioner, but she's been working a lot in like geriatrics. And like one of the last things she literally said to me was like, 
you should make a, you know, like your, your what's it, like the document for when you die. Uh, the will? Will, she was like, you yeah. should make one. She was like, and it was like we're having this whole conversation we're having now about like, even when you're young, like why you should have it all listed out. So in case something happens, people are like, well, shit, this is what he wanted. Yeah. You know? For it's sure. never too early to make a will. <laughs> True. You so know? Think about it. Talk about it. Um, Get it on writing paper. Yeah. And it's yeah. like, yeah, it's it's funny because it's like such a morbid thing, but I do believe I I do believe we need to t talk about death more. We we're a culture that doesn't not only doesn't embrace death, just like like actively resists it at every yeah. Part, oh, we, I mean, turn. we even the doctors aren't allowed to like just let someone die. Yeah, and that's an issue. Like I talked to my mom about this Which a I lot of of just like especially even older people and this might be contentious but yeah, yeah. she's like i don't think that we should be keeping people alive like past like you know especially if they have this disease it's like you should have died years ago and we keep them alive yeah and it's like in your but like you can barely live you're not living I think, um, you kind of become ooh. a shell of a and it's like some state know. just i think legalized um assisted suicide euthanasia see and this is funny because back in new zealand i had a joke called extreme euthanasia <laughs> and i was like you know okay also so in, in new zealand they have like all these extreme sports so i said you know like you know it's, maybe it's time for extreme euthanasia we get the whole old we get all the old people together and we and we go up into a plane and, and we wow. all go out and oh there's no parachute <laughs> you go out with a bang you know it's like yeah. you go bungee jumping they just cut as long, the cord as, long as, it's you know? as long as it's exact right as as you know but if people like signed up for it and it was like oh like grandpa's going to die what's he doing he's jumping <laughs> out of the plane he'd be like dude that's your grandpa's awesome like that's uh yeah. he chose that like that's a badass you mm -hmm. know but I think we should. I think I, it's like the fact that like we're not even allowed to have that conversation. But I think if you have an illness or something, it's like you're like I don't want to be here anymore. This is not yeah. fun. You know, you can choose works. out of a dream, right? Yeah. Can, this is no fun. I want to wake up. Like, why can't we have that conversation? We can't even have that conversation here. Or yeah. maybe we are opening up to it, but it's like to and me, even in the dream realm, right? I don't suggest just waking up. Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. But of like facing mm. and embracing the dream and working with what is you're afraid of. Yeah. And that's where a lot of real transformation yeah. happens. Yeah. Um, but I think the way that the assisted suicide works is you need, I think maybe one or two doctors that have diagnosed you as terminally ill with six months or less. Yeah. Um, you need to wait like two weeks after that request before well, that seems sensible, right? You know, you don't make any impulsive They decision. have like a pill that okay. just like slows your heart rate and kills you. And you have to be able to take that on your own. Mm. And those, there might be some other like okay. stipulations, precautions, but yeah. um, that's, that's kind of how that works. I think I'm a fan of euthanasia. I think it's a good option. <laughs> I think it should at least be an option. I and don't this know. This came up in the death cafe. Yeah. Where... Um, there was also a few other hospice workers, uh, volunteers, death doulas and stuff there. And one of them was sharing her experience that some of her clients do like talk a lot about being ready to die. Mm. And then they'll like choke on something. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And then be like, wait, no, 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 not yet, uh, not yet, not yet. <laughs> yeah. um, wow. But that having that option available is good. Even if you don't act on it, um, it, yeah. it What's like, I wonder, yeah. is like exactly just having that in the cards, exactly like how does that influence your decision making? Yeah. You know, and that might that might be huge. I don't know. Um, so what do you guys think? If you're watching, how do you feel about euthanasia? Euthanasia. <laughs> uh, assisted suicide or any experiences? Or yeah. how do you feel about death? You know, let us know in the comments. Or press all those buttons to like, love, does, does death make you angry? Press the angry button. You know, it's like yeah. I don't want to limit your expression, but we're, you know, we're talking about dreams. We're talking yeah. about death, and and it's something we should we should be able to talk about. Yeah. You know, we talk about so many things, and like we, I think we talk about so many things that don't matter. Um, and, you know, death is something we're all going to face it one day. Death is life. Death is life. Yeah, it's coming in from you know, this. Say, uh, hey, death is life. Life is death. Dying well is living well. Dying well. <laughs>
living well. I love that. You know, because yeah. if you live well and it's like and your time comes, yeah, you know, uh, you would accept it, right? You you know, if you really were living well, you would you wouldn't you'd be like you wouldn't be like no, this is ah, oh, this is all I have, you know, because you would know that this isn't. It. This, there's no way this is it, you know. One of my my favorite comedian, Bill Hicks, just goes, you know, it, it's 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 all it's a ride, you know. We all uh -huh. come in, we think it's so serious, and this and that, and this, but yeah. it's just a ride. <laughs> and we think we convince ourselves that it's real. <laughs> you know what's real? <laughs> and you know, like you, like you even said earlier, there's like, I won't use. He said, I forget his name, but he, said he doesn't even use the word reality anymore. Because yeah. Because what is? What does that mean? Yeah. <laughs> that assumes that it's like there's something that's not real. And it's all, yeah. it all feels very real. And this, uh, you know, is a moment. I had a, I had a near-death experience uh, in 2010. Mm. I was in a car accident. Wow. <clears throat> Rolled over like three times. Oh, my God. It was insane. <clears throat> right before I started um, at an acting conservatory and started doing yoga there. Mm. And that really rocked me. Yeah. Um, it was like, holy shit, I was so close to death. Yeah. Um, and really seeing all of life as bonus points. <laughs> yeah. But, but of this very fine line where you maybe say like, oh, nothing matters, it's all a dream. Yeah. Um, as this nihilistic approach. Sure. It's but like when, yeah. when you take that, and even in Buddhism, they, they have this philosophy of, of emptiness. Mm. And what the emptiness alone can be very nihilistic, but when we put on top of that compassion, mm. it's like, wait a minute, <laughs> nothing really matters. Yeah, like it, it suddenly is not a big deal. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> big weight off the shoulders. Nothing matters. <laughs> um, and that's not to say that things don't matter, right? But on a grand scale of things, it's like what you <clears throat> like worry about. You know, I guess right. where you focus your energy, you're like, I don't have to carry the weight of the world on my shoulders. Yeah. Maybe I, I, these three things matter to me and maybe that's it, but maybe that's all it takes for you to yeah. finally focus your energy to get to wherever you, to create the dream that you want to yeah. be in. And yeah. I think that contemplation on death, like what, what would, how would you spend your time if you knew you really only had six months to live, a week to live? And I think that really prioritizes. Would you really be paleo? Wouldn't you be, wouldn't you be eating the pasta? I'd be eating the pasta. Yeah. <laughs> I, got a, I got a joke. You got a joke. joke. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I think that's pasta, great. You eat the pasta. If you want the pasta, and I'm, eat I'm, the pasta. Sometimes <laughs> I go a little overboard and I'm like, well, I could die tomorrow. Right. You can, I can see how I get that... a little more indulgent than, than I should sometimes. Mm. Uh, but I think it's all right to be a little indulgent now and then. Yeah. As long as we're mindful of our indulgence. Everything in moderation, including moderation. moderation. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. <laughs> uh, rea reality. Reality, someone yeah. said on Instagram. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah we got, we're in the, the final stretch. We got oh, about 10 minutes. About 10 minutes. Uh, any last questions? Anyway? Yeah, any questions from Instagram, from Facebook, here. guys? Yeah, this is like, this is the bonus. We're in the bonus round, you know? What do you want to... I guess I can talk about some, some things that are coming up. <laughs> my mom, that's my pasta. mom. She Three of these of pasta. Yeah. My mom gets it. My yeah. mom makes great pasta, too. <laughs> I bet. Yeah. Um, so well, I teach uh, mm. Dream Yoga yeah. at Intersense Healing Arts Collective in Avondale, at 9.30 p.m. every Wednesday night. So it's like a late mm, night, right before super bed. chill yoga yeah. class. Yeah. Um, and then on May 9th, Thursday, um, at Sideshow Gallery, mm. it's this like oddities curiosity shop Ooh, in Bucktown. Oddities. I'll be doing a dreaming workshop called Discover the Dreamer. And mm. we'll talk all about dreams, myth, history, sleep science, getting better sleep, Tibetan dream yogas getting lucid, how to work with interpreting dreams, mm. uh, all that jazz. And be on the lookout for that. Uh, for those of you not on my Instagram, I'm at <laughs> A-L-E-J underscore Salinas. Yeah. Um, Feel free also after the week, you can go yeah. into the comments. Top them in type there. Type it in. Definitely send all your, if you have um just all your social media stuff to me because when i put it on youtube i can have sure. it all there for 
for when the Michael Boothby show takes off and everyone's checking out the archives. Oh, They're yeah. going to find Alejandro, who by then is going to have a killer <laughs> podcast on dreams. Yeah. And Some they're all gonna, in the works. All gonna get yeah fed into that. Some things so, in the works. Yeah, sure. maybe it's like what's 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 next? What's on the horizon? Um, I'm pushing talking, the boundaries yeah. of dreams and creativity. Uh, I did just host this dream yoga sleepover, which was my first time doing Sounded an overnight really cool. event. Yeah, I eventually want to work towards holding a whole weekend retreat. Mm. Um, looking forward to that and collaborating with other dreamers. I'm. I've, Three of my two of my friends on um, a podcast, possibly really early stages. I don't know if I Ooh. should be talking about it, but here I am Ooh. talking about it. Ooh, uh, I think it'll be all right. <laughs> yeah, um, we're thinking of like good good dream podcast names. Mm. Um, Ooh, so now I'm now I'm that. thinking. So if any of you that. have a good name for a dreamy Me, podcast, yeah, dream podcast, guys, shoot it out. Let the me title, know. You I'll know. give you some cred. <laughs> give you a shout out. Free all cred. My love. <laughs> Yeah. Mm. <clears throat> now, now I'm thinking. Dream. Mm. Yeah, we have we have a few in mind, but I'm always open to to hearing some some other things. <laughs> yeah. Oh, someone uh, said <laughs> yes. Haha. <laughs> yes. Jeanette said. Maybe just hashtag reality. <laughs> hashtag the reality. podcast. The podcast. Lucid dreaming. Lucid uh, scheme. And some other things yeah. are coming up. Okay. Most musician, April sixth. I'm uh, doing this event. Um, multidimensional, a multidimensional man. A renaissance. Renaissance. A renaissance. Uh, one of my friends, uh, Jean, she does uh, this thing called movement medicine, mm. and she combines movement like yoga, and plant medicine, and cool. sound healers in mm. a very safe, uh, very diverse space. Wow. <clears throat> yeah. Um, so you reach out about that. And um, Inner Sense Healing Arts Collective will be having a healing circle. I'm also a massage therapist cool. yeah. on uh, 420. We'll have a CBD vendor there. Cool. Nice. There'll be a massage <laughs> therapist, Reiki, uh, some tarot readers, All astrology that readers. Stuff. It's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, and I'm doing this other event called Portal, also on 420. Portal. Portal. With also Jean and Jane, 420. Oh, okay. With movement yeah. Medicine. Yeah. Um, it's going to be a huge 420 event. A ton of... Uh, it's it, there's so much going on there. Cool. Um, follow at Gene and Jane four twenty. Uh, let us know about it if you're interested. Um, I did it last year and it was just a whole lot of fun. A lot of artists, vendors, um, movement. So so many talented people in the community. <laughs> yeah, there really are. Just right. Bringing together. It's, yeah, that's 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 been the coolest thing I think for me being in the like you know arts community here and then the spiritual community but then like find a lot of people in the spiritual community they got these creative yeah. abilities as well they're yeah. like really artsy and then you like hear them play a song or like i saw you you uploaded a song on, yeah. on facebook there and i was like oh my god what this is incredible Thank what you. the heck <laughs> and it's like for me because like that's my my mission um that i've made for myself is to unlock the divine creative potential in myself and in all beings. So whenever I see that, I'm like, yes, more. Give the world more of that because we need, we need inspiration. You know, yeah. There's so many messages out there. A lot of them are negative. Why not be one of the positive? Yeah. Why not inspire someone? You know, you know, someone sees a song and you, you, know, you never know how that's going to influence them mm -hmm. or a poem or anything. So yeah. which is, that's my message to anyone watching. You know, whatever it is, create something. It doesn't have to be big. You, know, you can be a haiku, you know. Yeah. Just be writing a page in a journal. But do some create and do it for yourself. Don't, mm -hmm. don't, do, it. don't do it for me. But if you want to do it for me, you know, I'll, uh, I'd love to hear about it. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. It's a great way. Yeah. I mean, making art even, even to process things. Oh, yeah. Because even art itself is a process. I mean, I, but yeah. for me, I, I, I don't know, I can't speak for you, but for like music, for me, most of my music I've made is like processing things mm -hmm. I've feeling and can't really put into words. But then yeah. it's like you write the song and then it's like it's done and you release it. And then I'm like, oh, I feel better now. You know, it's mm -hmm. this weird thing. And then people can relate to that. Though. Yeah. It's funny, I, actually, I played a song this week for my, my buddy Liz, who I was staying with in Colorado Springs. And she's like, she actually, she cried. Episode. She's like, my, I've never, no one's ever played a song that's made me cry, but you did that. I was like, you need to record this music. I was like, I, yeah, I would love to. <laughs> like, I would, I would love to record this music. Yeah, when and I, it's so easy to these days. Oh, yeah, we're, I got a mic right we're doing here. It right that now. I just yeah. upload to YouTube, SoundCloud, Spotify. It's, 
and it's out. Uh, yeah, it's, it's in our hands. In the cloud, the dream. The dream. We didn't even talk about that. The internet is the internet a dream? No, oh, gosh. Oh, for sure. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, cool. very dreamy space. Sam Botner says, let's get it. And Sam Botner is a very creative dude. Yo, Sam He's Botner is a homie. He's a homie. Go check uh, him out. Go check him out. <laughs> We're promoting Sam. <laughs> if you come to the end of the, at the, end of the show, there's a, there's a yeah. hidden Easter egg promoting Sam and his recording Brother. studio. Him and Dustin, Sam and Dustin, mm. if you have a chance to go check out some of their sound stuff, it's cool. they're wizards. They actually, my very first uh, mindful improv event, they both came and did oh, sound. Yeah. Sam did some breath work. It was, oh, man. It was amazing. Yeah, I want, I want you guys back. We got we to gotta talk. Now that I'm, I'm back in Chicago, we got to start planning some events. But now we're going, we're going off the rails. We're just <laughs> talking to people. We're talking to personal people, talking about our friends, which is yeah. fine, which is great. But we love our friends. We love our friends, you know, yeah. and you should too. And if you don't have friends, make some friends. Mm -hmm. um, I love people. There's like six people watching now. Yeah. Yeah, it's okay. You know, yeah. that's, catch us live on the, I mean, not live on yeah, the. Yeah, catch the replay. It. We'll be here. <laughs> Sam sends love. We'll send some love back. Um, yeah, guys, I mean, this video will be up here on my Facebook. You can feel free to watch it. We got some stuff on Instagram, but yeah. I'll definitely be uploading it. Now that I'm home, I actually got Wi-Fi again. I'll be uploading it to YouTube. I've almost got all of the episodes up. So please, if you haven't, make sure to subscribe to the Michael Boothby Show on YouTube. Um, I think I'm around like 40 so people. I'm trying to get to 100 so I can actually get a unique URL. This is youtube.com slash the Michael Boothby show. Um, nice. So if you're watching, if you really want to support, like, I'll post a link. Please, please, please like and subscribe. There's going to be so many. I have so many more interviews. Um, we, I, th I think I interviews booked for the next next three or four nights. So lots of different nice. people. Um, some <clears throat> friends, some people I just met who are experts. I got a dating coach coming on who I met on Instagram. My friend Megan Jandy, who she's a teacher down in Florida, is coming on tomorrow, and she's the sister of my best friend's ex-girlfriend. And but I always see her post on on <laughs> yeah, right. You're like how? Um, but I always see her post on Facebook, and she's always like writing these really amazing things, really inspirational. Um, she says she's a little sick right now, so hopefully she gets to the day tomorrow teaching and and has and has her voice. Uh, we'll be live, so look for that. Um, Alejandro promoted all his events. Feel free to post your events in the comments. Sure. Um, yeah, guys, that's uh, I think that's it's all we got. Thank you guys Peace. so much for watching. I'm Michael Boothby. This is Alejandro Salinas. Rock and roll. And rock and roll. And I'll catch you guys tomorrow night. Have a good one.